Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and today we're going to do the Future Friday video where we take a look about four months into the future on the JP side, and we're going to be looking at that 3.5 year anniversary content a little bit, featuring a lot of Husbando Jaden, including an hilar hilarious and hilarious a hilarious i teach fifth graders how to talk a hilarious ad from the jp side that i wish we just had some of on the global side i wish we had stuff like this flying around global twitter or something check that out let me just let me just show it to you FFB 幻影戦争3.5周年。今なら。URL5画角定。100連勝感が無料。さらに。FF5コラボも同時開催中。3.5周年キャンペーン実施中。今こそ。幻影戦争。All right, like wasn't that really good? I enjoyed the heck out of that. I hope you did too. I'm going to play some jaded stuff in the background right now, but I think the 3.5 year anniversary is going to be a really hype time for Global again. We're kind of entering into one of those, I'm not going to call it a lull, there's still a lot of um, good stuff going on in the game right now, a lot of cool stuff coming out, but people really like Final Fantasy collaborations, mainline ones, and we're going to get the Final Fantasy V collaboration, and that's going to build into the 3.5 year anniversary with Jaden and all of the rest of the celebration stuff that's going to go on there. Now, I'm going to cover all that in a lot more detail when it comes to us, but I want to spend this video just focusing on Jaden and stuff that's coming out then, so if you decide you want to save some Vizior for that time, this might help you plan that out. So here's your guy, Celebratory Jaden, or as the translation says, Celebratory Jaden, Jadan. It's Jed Dan. It's somebody from the American South, like Alabama, first name Jed, last name Dan. Two first names, Jed Dan, Celebratory Jed Dan. Yeah, there's some analysis for you. Anyway, Ice Character, 100 cost, Magic Piercing Damage Unit. I love that he's a piercing unit. It fits his character so well that his return to the game is with a spear in his hand awesome all right cool so let's talk about him his tmr looks really good it's a five agility tmr with a 60 percent magic steroid attached to it he's got spirit penetration magic aoe resist accuracy those are all just banger stats to have for a modern carry in this game i think he's going to be very very strong before we go look at his skills i mess with him on the builder a little bit right here you see he can get up to a 75 agility walking into a fight with his sub job stuff like that um i think he's He's going to be fast. I think he's going to hit really hard. His stat line, 3,800 HP, uh, 681 magic, 75 agility, just looks pretty good to me as I was messing with him a little bit. If we go look at his kit, let me tell you how I got him there. Glimpse of Hero, his support ability is magic agility, all elemental resistance, and critical evasion 20. This is insanely good. It's another one of those, there's a theme right now with like big characters, big carries coming out in the game. They have one support ability, especially if it catches an EX upgrade, that is just like three or four other support abilities shoved into one. It's one of the ways the newer units are out classing the older units and i know people are going to be like power creep stupid y'all it's the 3.5 year anniversary of this game if if husbando Jaden is not better than eileen we've got problems in fact if husbando Jaden is not better than oberon we've got problems because story-wise he's better than oberon too anyhow he also has a defense spirit penetration support ability which i like a lot he's got one that upgrades shield breaker and another one of his moves with critical rate 15 that's good here's where i got all of that extra agility you could run cleric knowledge to make him go even faster um and then you can also give him hp and magic so if you want this version of him with 75 agility you're gonna have to run both of those agility passives still you have options here none of those suck none of them do i really like this spirit penetration one though anyway 
He's got a new counterattack that he's bringing into the game, a magic piercing counterattack. Nice range on it, just hits in a line though. Then he has dispel auto revive, so dispel re-raise. He has a buff for himself that's magic debuff resistance and AP restore. Not bad, but not great. That's probably not what you're going to be running on him. He has another buff, blessing of the shield that gives him a 10,000 HP physical damage shield. So he's definitely going to be an anti-physical unit. So cool, that gives you some direct if you're building him or thinking about building him. It also gives um, single target resist to his allies, slash resistance to his allies, and this is a unique new thing. Is allies get a buff that on hit, they reduce slash resistance penetration by 30 for their targets. So if they can hit first, turning off slash resist, that's kind of a cool new thing. So you can like anti-penetrate your units. It's interesting. Anyway, he also has barrier breaking in there. He's got a lot of big AOE damage moves. This one has insane range with the upgrade from the support ability. Um, he has a weird shaped AOE right here. So he can do a lot of things. I think he's going to hit really hard. Um, his limit break also drops uh, pierce resistance. So that's kind of just a quick overview of his kit. This is not, I know people make comments about this. This is not me doing a character deep dive or character review. I'm just showing you this is what's coming a little bit. I will give you a lot more like analysis the week before he comes out like I always do. There's a commenter that just always has to bring that up. Anyway, so that's this guy. Now, there's a couple new... Um, you know, we just got that new game mode in the game, Legendary Reliquaries. There's a couple new weapons or items coming out in that soon. This is the Katana, so it's a nice little agility when your HP is above 80% with Human Resist 5 and Crit Rate on it. Has a, a big attack stat and a little bit of magic on it. Then the Dragon Claw, which looks like a PvE specialty item if you're fighting dragons. Dragon Killer 30, Reaction Block Rate, Strike Attack... And then, an interesting thing here, especially for PvE, if you have a way of dropping your HP below 50%, you get 10% physical damage and 10% magic damage. It's a claw, right? So a fist weapon with attack, magic, accuracy, evade. It's just full of stats. It's weird. This is another weird piece of gear, but if you're fighting PvE dragons, it might be best in slot for your striking units. Now, we've got some other stuff coming down the pipe as well. We're getting Dark Shiva eventually, and the thing I like about these Dark Espers is that they're double element. This is so nice. In a world where so many of our vision cards right now are tied to jobs, and yes, it's fun to mess with those, you really have to go down the rabbit hole of theory crafting to mix and match a lot of job-based vision cards and elements. These are so much easier to understand, and I prefer them. Um, this one's Agility, Critical Evasion, Magic. So very, very strong. Clearly meant to be coming out with Jaden. It comes with an Esper that's a fast magic-based Esper. Skill trees into Ice Attack, AoE Resist, Accuracy, Crit Rate, Initial AP, which I think is huge. And then 200% Magic Damage, 5%. If you go all the way down the Initial AP tree, you get 5% more Magic Damage. You can't even read it all. It doesn't even all fit on there. And some Pierce Attack. So clearly this is Jaden's esper but it would be so good on a lot of other um ice units especially ice units that scale off of magic and the attack stat on here doesn't suck like it doesn't suck anyhow that's it for the preview here um a couple other things to or that's it for the specific preview but i want to mention a couple other things as well wind looks like it's finally at the 3.5 year anniversary going to experience its resurgence a little bit. Wind was so strong before Transcendence and 140s got here. But then, Wind's best units, Joom, Sodaly, Flagbear, Glassy, they've been slower than other units in getting their 140s. Sodaly, Glassy, both getting them. Let's take a quick look. Glassy's dream ability upgrade is more HP, more slash resist, and an upgrade to a skill. Let's see what skill that is. Taurus, Taurus Cup. Well, it's this one right here. So her support ability is getting upgraded. It was AOE resist, defense pin, accuracy before. It's now getting debuff resistance 30. That's not insane to me. Like, she will love more HP and she will like more slash resistance, but she is just going to continue to be very, very strong. In my opinion, this will not push her back into, like, best unit in the game category, but it will buff her a little bit. And then, Sodaly also getting his. This is his is better so he's getting more magic which is obviously insane he's getting slash and magic resist and then his immortal dogma skill this is the big one right here immortal dogma 
Um, if you didn't know, this was his buff. He could cast on an ally to give them re-raise um, and increase their chance of being targeted. Now it does so many things. 200% chance to auto-revive for ally if the target has one or more of re-raise, increase their chance of being targeted. Increase single target resist 20. Okay, so now they get single target resist 20. Increase critical evasion 20. So now they get 20 critical evade. 200% chance to auto-revive for self if the target has re-raise. So he's giving himself and the target re-raise. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then he also gets the single target resist and he gets the critical evasion. This is now a top tier buff, solidly right back to the top of a uh, tier list, right back to the top of wins meta. He's already there anyway. This is just cementing him there. This is a massive dream upgrade for him. So that's a nice little buff coming down the pipe. Um, here you can kind of see there's these units are also getting their dream enhancements. Um, vision card costs are getting changed. We'll talk a lot more about this with these job-based vision cards getting their costs lowered. I think this is a cool thing, uh, but I can't read Japanese is the problem. So I like, I go to the Japanese news pages and I have a heart. I believe what they're doing here is trying to make these more usable and like cost limited competitive play by it since they're harder to build, lowering the cost of them. I like that approach. It is a needed buff to those cards, so I'm all about buffing anything that we already have. Anyway, there's your Future Friday preview. A lot about Jaden, a little bit of a look at the Master Ability, or not the Master Ability 2's, the Transcendences, and that hilarious ad. I think that was the best part of the video. All right, guys, thank you for watching. If you want to save up for any of that stuff, start saving some busy or now, and I'll catch you next time. Have a great weekend, everybody. Summer break is here. Today's the last day of school. Yes. See you later. Peace.